This live webinar is part of the Net Zero Week 2024, the UK's official National Awareness Week. You can learn more about the week and still get free tickets for more online events at www.netzeroweek.com. Today, we will touch on the skills and knowledge required for energy professionals who are responsible with driving their organization's net zero journeys and delivering carbon emission reduction targets. We will take you through the EI's net zero for professionals training course, and we will also briefly look into the opportunities and challenges on the road to net zero for two international organizations. Before we start, just a bit of webinar housekeeping. Please note that the, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be made available on demand to all those who registered for events across the week and also past delegates. An email after the end of Net Zero Week will be sent out. All participants will be muted except for them, the speakers. And also please feel free to post uh, questions in the chat box and introduce yourselves. And um, after the event, if you have any follow up questions, please email them directly to apostolos at energyinst.org. I will now briefly introduce the Energy Institute to those of you who might not have heard us before. We are the chartered professional membership body for people who work across the world of energy. We are not we are a not-for-profit organization, and we have around 20,000 individual members and 200 company members in 120 countries across the world. And we actually date back more than a century now. Our purpose is to create a better energy future for our members and society by accelerating a just global energy transition. We do this through um, three strategic themes. The first theme is around attracting, developing, and equipping the diverse future energy workforce. This is supported by our academy, which I will cover in a bit more detail shortly, and also a range of professional development qualifications, the likes of chartered energy manager. The second theme is around informing energy decision making through convening expertise and advice. This includes all of our events, such as today's webinar and our renowned International Energy Week, our online magazine, New Energy World, and also um, a series of free reports, publications, and other resources, such as the Statistical Review of World Energy, which is published annually. The third and final strategic theme is around enabling industry to make energy lower carbon, safer, and more efficient. This theme is supported by our technical and innovation program, which produces and publishes world-leading industry standards and good practice documents. Going back to uh, strategic theme one, which is the focus of this webinar, the EI Academy is the home of our comprehensive training portfolio. We offer a broad range of online and face-to-face -face training courses designed to support professionals throughout their careers, from the very early stages up to the point they might be looking to gain chartered status with us. The training offering is constantly expanding to follow the, the dynamic and fast-paced developments of the energy industry on the road to net zero. Last year, we developed our net zero for professionals training goals. Today with us, we have three uh, brilliant energy professionals who have all been associated um, with the training course, either as developers and uh, trainers or as course delegates. I would like to welcome all three of you and ask you to briefly introduce yourself and uh, starting with uh, with Gareth. Good morning, everybody. My name is Gareth Veal, and I've really enjoyed over the last 10 years developing training with the Energy Institute and delivering the same material. I've worked on the energy material and the net zero course. And my background is sort of half chartered engineer with 
experience of working in the boiler house and developing designs and half working in head office and business strategy, which I'll, I'll talk in a bit more detail later, but I think that's a sort of balanced way of being able to engage with net zero. Uh, thank you, Gareth. Uh, moving on with Andy. Andy, please introduce yourself. Hi there, I'm Andy Holt. I'm Sustainability Manager at GlaxoSmithKline. I've worked for the company for around about 15 years and I'm currently leading the uh, Energy and Carbon at Zero program in the part of the organisation that looks after the R&D facilities and the commercial facilities. Thank you, Andy. And Chris? Uh, afternoon, everybody. I'm Chris Johnson, Group Energy uh, and Environment Manager for Verlac International. Um, I've been with the company for a couple of years now and the role was created around helping Volac to understand its um, environmental requirements and more so its energy and carbon reduction needs that are going to hit the business over the next sort of 20 years or so. So fairly new role for the business, um, fairly new role for myself. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you all. And starting the discussion, Gareth. Um, as one of the lead developers of, of, of this training force, could you please tell us a bit more about it, how it came about and what it covers? For sure. So I, there's a little bit more background about me as a trainer there. And I think the really interesting thing, I started working in energy efficiency around about the year 2000. And the big difference between energy efficiency and net zero is net zero requires you to engage with your business model and takes you right up to the board level and looks at your future of your strategy. And that's where I think there's an interesting interplay. We wanted a course that was slightly broader in um, its target audience than some of our specialist energy training, that anyone who is engaged in the delivery of net zero would be able to sort of have a whistle stop tour from lots of different perspectives, check for any blind spots, come in and have a group of people as peers and myself or someone else as a, a leader for the training to both test their existing ideas and look for new opportunities. Apostolos, if we went on the next slide, please. So as we say, I always start with a joke because the course is for anyone who calls themselves a professional who's involved in delivering net zero. And then the concept of net zero is a pretty broad concept. It's sort of up there with things like sustainability and capitalism. But we do cover most of the different perspectives that would be important. And I, I thought this is illustrative to talk about a few of the people who I've met since delivering the course. So we had the senior finance manager for Gala Bingo. This was a lady with lots of business strategy expertise, boardroom kind of experience, but wanted to know more about how to actually engage with net zero and make sense of what was possible. She was looking at their portfolio of property and how to make sense of what to do with a rental property um, compared to what to do with uh, an owner occupied property, that kind of thing. So we also had um, the sustainability team come from Transport for London and they came with quite a detailed existing strategy. And they were really, I think, searching for new opportunities to extend their ideas and test their ideas. So they some of the foundational principles were less relevant to them, but they wanted to just expand and catch new new things. Chris and Andy were very good examples of um, time served and uh, experienced engineers. And they wanted to sort of bring net zero into their engineering and energy experience. And I've got one more. Um, a gentleman came from the regulatory body that deals with green gas, and he wanted to understand um, alternative perspectives of how green gas would be part of the net zero future. So it's the courses to sort, support anyone who's involved in delivering net zero. So you don't have to be an engineer um, and you just have to have a role in the business strategy in that field. It's delivered in a number of formats and I'll post that link, which is not easy to get from Google or it's a copy and type. Um, you can come as a two day delivery. You can have an online course and we do also deliver in house and bespoke training as well. So by the end of the course, you should be able to present and understand the concept of net zero. Um, I'll show you in a bit more detail in the next slide. We untangle the concept of net zero from lots of related terms. And I tend to find that helps both the business people and the engineers because it's net zero means 
one thing to every individual person. So making sure we have a shared definition is really important. Um, Science-based targets are a related theme, which are really important. And we go through those. We actually go into the spreadsheets and show demystify the process. And then we get into the development of a net zero strategy, how to tra track the emissions. And we talk about some of the organizational concepts. We use Cotter's framework for change. Um, and we look at the net zero target set for the Energy Institute as an example of how you can communicate and plan for delivery. If I could have the next slide, please, Apostolos. So in bold, I have two slides now which just cover the core concepts that are in the content of the course. And there's a few slides. We have lots of examples that are both discussions in the class and worked exercises. I would say about half of the course is covered by core material and the other half is a bit like a workshop where people can bring particular perspectives and explore themes in a fairly open-ended way so it's it's not fully delivered in a in a single direction it, we it's much more fun if people bring their own questions and their own um challenges that they're working on so in terms of core concepts we make sure everyone has a shared definition of net zero we link it in with related themes. So we, we start at sustainability, work through climate change, get to net zero. And then we place it in the context of the global regulatory framework. And we look at both business and government commitments to date to place your strategy within what's likely to be required by external parties. And then we look at the business case. And I won't list through all those different areas, but we look at a mix of small case studies which show points of departure and interesting opportunities um, across all the different themes. And if I could have the next slide, please, Apostolos. Mm -hmm. Then once we've set that context, the next important thing to be able to do is actually understand how you track net zero. So we talk about how to develop baseline figures. We look at once you have a, a carbon baseline, we, we also make sure everyone understands the difference between carbon, greenhouse gases. We look at the Kyoto Protocol basket. So by the end of the process, you could either calculate a simple footprint yourself, or you could make sense of a more complicated one because you'd have covered all the base concepts. Um, we then turn that into a science-based trajectory, and we use that to set out net zero pledges. And as I said, we, we actually go into the Science Based Target Initiatives website. We download the tools and working together, we go through them because I, I often find Science Based Target Initiative is quite. It's quite a sort of ethereal thing until you actually have a go and find out the process itself is quite approachable and it demystifies everything really nicely. We use Cotter's H step change model to look at a case study of how the Energy Institute's targets were launched and how they've been very successful in their delivery in the first three or four years. And we encourage people to apply that to their work setting and, and discuss two or three examples for themselves um, with the group. Then it's common at the moment that net zero, there's some pretty bold and sometimes quite weak claims around net zero. So we provide some important context in terms of Green Claims Code Checklist, which is about a 15 step set of questions that your environmental claims, including net zero, would have to pass. And um, one exercise which I think people find quite interesting is we go to the Advertising Standards Authority website and we look up rulings. So you can find really interesting reference points where a claim has been made and either upheld or overruled. Um, and there's often useful reference points for the candidates to take home and use to discuss, to communicate their plans back to the other team. So it's quite a hands-on process. And the aim is people kind of come, they want to look at net zero from as many angles as possible, gain most of the fundamental concepts, explore best practice and blind spots. It's a nice soft setting to road test your strategies and presenting them to an audience that will be constructive and low risk. And um, Apostolos, if we just look at the last slide quickly for me, these are some of the themes. They're not core priorities, but they're ones that quite often come up. So 
at one end, you've got definitely the first start of the energy hierarchy of efficiency, and you've got offsetting to get to your net zero position. And there's lots of discussion about the role of renewables in net zero. That comes up a lot. Um, lots of people come with an understanding of net zero that gets unpicked and put back together, and it's useful to compare and contrast those. Uh, lots of people often want to know how science-based targets could fit into a net zero trajectory. People like the fact that we go into detail on um, the Energy Institute as a case study. And I think I've said most of the other points. So yeah, the, we would encourage people to come with their own questions and ideas. It's a fairly flexible process. I think for Apostolos, I'm back to you now. Is that right? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Gareth. Um, yes, moving on to, to, to Chris and Nandi as, as delegates of the course. Um, I would like to ask you if you could please briefly kind of describe your experience attending to the face-to-face -face version um, and what were the highlights of and the key benefits for you? Uh, what did you take with you to be able to you know, apply to your existing strategies uh, moving forward? Uh, Chris, would you like to go first on this one? Yeah, thank you, Apostolos. Um, I think one of the things that I found really useful, uh, and, and Gareth touched on it to some degree, was the the diverse range of the people that were in the room. Um, and there were people that had got very little idea of what we were talking about from a net zero point of view to people who had obviously worked in this area for a number of years. Um, the, the real positive thing I took out of that was the freshness of challenge that we got across a number of areas, even from myself who's working on a um, net zero roadmap at this moment in time to hear what other people thought about that net zero roadmap where we were going how it was being put together was really interesting from a point of view of not just learning but also verifying where we were on the journey to some degree which i think was really good because on the back of the case study we did for um the ai we used a bit of the volac work that we were doing as well to to inform the room of other ways and other things you could be doing and how we were tying it all together so i think that was one of the really good things that i got out about it was the the, the being in the room with with various people from different backgrounds that gave you a different um idea and overview of where you thought you were on your journey that's that's brilliant thank you thank you chris and andy moving on with you hi there thanks yeah i think for me, uh, it's really important for our generation to lead the journey and make impactful changes and, uh, and avoid pitfalls such as greenwashing. Uh, and any actions we, which we take around net zero need to be additive and really make a difference. Uh, and in order to be able to, to progress that with an organisation, especially one like GlaxoSmithKline, which is, is very large, it's really important to be able to articulate what our net zero plans and ambitions are clearly through uh, good fact-based and persuasive conversations and that was really the, the the key reason why I went on this course. I think you know it was really around being able to speak knowledgeably about net zero and I know Gareth has picked up some of these things already but some of the highlights for me were really understanding the core concepts, the definitions and the underlying science uh, climate science behind why we why we're all doing this. That was really interesting. Uh, also, the, uh, as we things around, uh, you know, what exactly is the difference between when we talk about carbon net zero and we talk about offsets and carbon neutrality? Is it the same thing? And, and how do we say and decide which one we should be using? Um, the, the third thing which I thought was really good was around, you know, helping helping with the business case. You know, we're, most of us were in organisations which are commercially driven and understanding why this is so important for organisations, you know, in terms of things like the, the business reputation, in terms of showing leadership, simple things as well actually we can save money by being net zero and, and the sort of resilience the organization can bring so those were you know we, we talked through those themes and i found that really helpful um in terms of how i can apply that within my own role within the organization the team which i work with thank you thank you Andy. yes and i would like to 
um, particularly touch on, 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 on the point you made around the terms and the concepts and, you know, providing clarity, I think is very important and making sure that everyone is on the same page, page and understands the meaning of those terms. They're being used massively these days and I'm not sure whether, you know, everyone really, really understands the meaning. Now we'd like to open up the discussion a bit more around skills that are um, required for the energy transition. Um, an interesting statistic comes from the International Energy Ag Agency. One of their um, reports point to uh, 14 million new clean energy jobs being created by 2040, plus another 16 million workers shifting across to new roles that relate to, to clean energy. Uh, what skills you find it as the most important moving forward? What gaps you might see at your own teams, stakeholders, and more widely in the sector? Uh, who would like to, to start? Yeah, I, I don't mind if you don't, if you want to, Apostolos. I, th I think it, it, it goes back to some of the things that have already been discussed to some degree. Um, as I said, I came into Vo like a couple of years ago and you're quite right in what you say. There are lots of people that think they understand the terminology. Um, and when you start to delve into the detail around it, as we did do in the course, some of the terminology becomes a bit more clearer and slightly different to what you think other people understand the terminology to be. Um, so understanding that side of things that you can then take back to your business to communicate to others across the wider team that you're working with allows you to to lead that program to some degree and lead the conversation in the right direction the the other good thing for me was we had already engaged with a partner to help us do our climate carbon footprint and the ability to understand and challenge that team in a bit more depth as well was really good because obviously once you have the knowledge you're you're more inclined to actually sort of defend or question a position that they've put forward to you because you understand more about the subject rather than just what you're being told. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, Andy or Gareth, would you like to give it a go? Andy, you're welcome to go first if you like. I'll just have a, I'm a, obviously we haven't got a huge amount of time, but I mean, just also just to sort of say, for, you know, for, you know, the, uh, the training and the understanding around sort of very interpretations uh, is really important. And, you know, the standards around that are fluid and changing all the time. So to get that, you know, here and now, I thought that was very good you know, to enable us to speak with authority and anyone, you know, involved in the net zero agenda and driving that through their company's needs, needs that, that skills to be able to, to push, push it forward. So knowledge and communication clearly uh, come up as very important. Gareth, what are your thoughts? I, I think it's just it depends what your background is as to what the main skills that would be missing are or well, not missing, but important. Um, but if you were to take the transition from being an energy manager to being someone working on net zero, then energy management can be done as a fairly technical discipline as an engineer within a fairly closed audience, typically within a facilities management kind of context for buildings. Um, but a realistic net zero strategy for an organization is a business strategy that is enabled by engineering rather than just an engineering exercise. So I think an understanding of how to write a business case, how to understand your business model and how to implement organizational change is really important. And we, we do spend about half the course on that side of things. It's not just a technical course. Exactly. Th thank you, Gareth. So more than technical, um, you know, um, what I don't like the term much soft skills uh, and their core soft skills are, are, are very important I and mean, that's around making a business case as you said um, behavioral change and um, uh, concepts and also communication as Chris and Nandi uh, highlighted. Um, could finally, be one more thing a possible yeah. that could be useful I think in net zero it's really hard to tell if you come to it sort of as part of your day-to-day -day role but not your specialism it's really hard to differentiate best practice from um, potential distractions or sort of things that could cause you trouble. And so just having a foundational knowledge of net zero, is, I think um, 
I think it was Andy was saying it, it gives you the ability to act as an intelligent customer to expert advisors. And also it's seeing under the bonnet, for example, how to set a science based target. It gives you a perspective that shows it's really not rocket science and um, you can actually get more into it yourself. Even if you don't deliver it, you can be quite informed into how it works and um, yeah, just more demystify confident, things. Right, to, yeah. to navigate through, yes, the landscape. So you become sort of an informed decision maker rather than just having to take people's advice on face value, which I think is quite important. I totally agree. Thank you, Gareth. And um, um, being uh, mindful of time, uh, the last bit finally, I would like us to uh, look into uh, GSK's and Volac's own net zero journeys and decarbonization paths. Um, Andy, uh, starting with you, could you please share information you know, on the current status of uh, the GSK's pathway to net zero um, along with the next steps and the key challenges you might be facing? <laughs> Yeah, yes, sure. Um, so GSK, you can see here uh, uh, the, the company's pathway to net zero. We've made some very aggressive commitments externally that are al aligned with the science-based targets uh, initiative. Um, so by 2025, we're targeting that all our all our sites will be will have electricity supplied from renewable sources, and that's globally, not just in in areas where is readily available and by 2030 we are aiming to have an 80 percent carbon reduction across scope one two and three um with 20 percent uh nature-based offsets and then in, in and then very recently we announced a, a further uh, uh, improvement, if you like, on that target for 2045 to actually get down to 90% uh, carbon reductions and reduce our reliance on on uh, uh, offsets and and, resid and carbon credits for the last 10%. Uh, do you want to go on to the next slide? Sure. So d just to put this into perspective and more sort of d down to earth in terms of we've taken that away and in terms of on our, our sites, what we've been doing, we've been pulling together a, a, a strategy around, uh, first of all, reducing our energy as much as we can. And that's and that's really important so that when we decarbonise, that replacing our, our steam gas fired heating systems with heat pumps we don't have to invest so much money so we're really working hard to drive that down so a steamage site for example at the moment 2022 at 123 gigawatt hours energy and that energy reduction will get us down to 86 gigawatt hours and then the, the last step to 2030 is to decarbonize replace all our heating systems with heat heat pumps predominantly although there will still be some direct electrical heating and replace all our electricity with renewable sources and that will uh, first of all be done with 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 on-site uh, solar where we can off-site solar with a direct connection so we can actually demonstrate the additionality of what we're doing and anything else we can't do through that will be through uh, purchase of renewable electricity so that's kind of just puts into perspective the the plans and we've done this across all of our sites manufacturing sites across the globe to uh, address the scope one and two thank you thank you very much andy uh, chris would you like also to uh, quickly go through volat's uh, next zero journey? yeah yeah thank you unfortunately no slides from me i'm afraid um we're very similar to Andy to some degree. We're looking to try and be net zero by 2045. Um, we have two distinct divisions. One works in animal nutrition. The other works in human uh, nutrition. So we um, work as part of the dairy industry and we take whey from cheese manufacturers uh, and turn it into either milk replacer products for young animals or into human whey nutrition products. Um, Volac have been fairly on the front foot with um, energy reduction. They've done a number of things over a number of years, all the way back to sort of 2013 when they got rid of the heavy fuel oils. Um, we installed a biomass at our largest site in 2016. We purchased green energy for all the sites in 2018, but we're still looking at what we can do next and how we can reduce that. We're currently in the middle of doing a scope three screening exercise to understand our carbon footprint in its wider context. Um, and we're looking then at this year building a 
net zero roadmap based on scope one and scope twos being sort of net zero by 2030 um, at the main manufacturing site in Wales. And we're also looking at the two next manufacturing sites in our annual division. Um, and again, looking at what we can do to make those net zero by 2030, looking at the use of renewables where possible, so solar or wind. Um, we're also considering uh, a large um, renewable AD plant on one of the sites as well, just to see if we can um, affect that a bit quicker. So there's there's plenty of work going on. Um, the net zero roadmap is what we need to create next, which we will then um, put our targets and reductions um, onto to make sure that we've got a firmed up map to get us to 2045. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Um, I would like to thank all of you for joining this webinar today. I hope you, you found it useful and, and informative. Unfortunately, we, we were running out of time. If you have any questions or would you like to find uh, more about our training portfolio, please contact us at uh, webtraining at energyinst.org. Thanks again all for joining. Thank you. Thank you, Rostlis. Hey, Gareth. Thanks, Postalos, Gareth, Andy. Bye bye. Come.